Hey everybody, uh, sorry it's been so long since uh, the last time that I uh, released a blog. Uh, just uh, kind of a lot of changes in life. I moved from one job to another. Uh, as you guys know, I was looking for gainful employment, found it. Uh, that meant that I had to uh, take part in training for the better part of the month. And so I was uh, driving back and forth between Southeast Michigan where I live and Southwest Michigan where the training center was. And so now I'm back, done with training. So hopefully I can do a lot more of these at least uh, for the next 19 days before school starts and my blogs uh, the content of the blogs probably become more tethered to whatever whatever it is I might be learning at that point in time um, what I want to talk about today is kind of amalgamation of things so I, I hesitate to say one particular topic but I'll just say pastors dealing with inconsistency uh, as someone who's studying for the ministry, there are a few things that I'm very, very frustrated with, and um, I'm not going to go into all of them, but I'm going to talk about a particular episode that happened to me recently. And so uh, I went to a uh, a party for a friend of mine. They they recently got divorced, and, and that's sad, but uh, they they got a new house, and so we were kind of celebrating uh, this this housewarming and. I went to her house and there were a few of her friends there and we were going to go out on the town and so there was a guy friend and a girlfriend and and both of them had kind of been burned by the church and as I was talking uh, with uh, this this young lady uh, she she said you know I used to be the worship leader in my church and I was like okay you know so how did the church burn you was it politics or what you know what happened and she said you know and, and then they they kicked us out of leadership because my boyfriend and I were, were living together. And so I was like, huh, okay, that's interesting. And then the next thing she said, you know, well, we went to another church and we really got burned there because the there was pastoral molestation of children and so the church decided to to hide that and, and sweep it under the rug. And, you know, to that I was definitely like, wow, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. And... Uh, but what I found interesting was she was searching for consistency on the part of the church when it came to hiding molestation because she knew, okay, that is wrong. How can the church do this? They're supposed to protect children. How can you sweep this under the rug? And not only can, how, how can you sweep it under the rug, but how could the pastor take part in doing something like this? And so she was calling for the church to be consistent in its message of taking care of the children and the father, fatherless and the widow and so she was asking for consistency in that area. But when it came to living with her boyfriend, uh, she was, you know, burned by the church. And I don't want to assume that, you know, nobody in the church got it wrong and how they approached the topic with her. But uh, it seems to me that uh, Scripture is pretty clear on, on this matter. And we don't get it all right. Lord knows I've gotten it wrong. I've been very open about that. Um, you know, I have my own sexual history, my own sexual past, my own sexual present in many ways, uh, of things that, you know, people might kind of raise an eyebrow on. But the, the church has a consistent message of you, you don't sleep together unless you're married. As far as I understand, you know, within evangelicalism, you know, that's a pretty strong message. And so, on the one sense, she's asking the church, be consistent, live what you preach, care for children, care for the fatherless, care for the widow protect the innocent, don't molest children, don't sweep it under the rug, don't pretend that it didn't happen, let's get this guy out of this position of authority because he doesn't need to be here. Um, the church would be consistent in, in that sense if that happened. Uh, but she's asking the church simultaneously to be inconsistent uh, in the fact that she's upset that you know the church put her out of leadership because she was, quote, living with her boyfriend. And so that, uh, that to me is interesting. So on the one hand, she wants the church to be consistent, and the other hand, she wants the church to be inconsi inconsistent because it's something that she wants to do. She wants to do this thing over here, so the church being consistent, well, that's actually the church, you know, overstepping their bounds in my personal life, and they shouldn't, they shouldn't have that kind of space. And I didn't say any of this to her. Um, because I hadn't earned the right in her life to, to say any of those things, but that's the thought that's going into my head, uh, going on in my head at the time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we all went out that night into Royal Oak, which is this kind of nice area in, in Southeast Michigan, lots of shops and eateries and whatnot, and we're hanging out, and 
There's this guy on the street corner. We've just gotten done eating uh, dinner at uh, the Royal Oak Brewery, and we're heading up the sidewalk, and there's this guy on the corner, and he's got... You know the the head, you know the headset on, and this power pack on his side, and he's just preaching. But he's not really preaching; he's screaming at people. And so, uh, you know, he's saying, you know, the husband is the head of the wife. And I'm like, okay, well, that's that's in scripture, but that's all he's saying. And so, if you're a feminist and you're walking by, you're instantly upset. Um, he said, you know, uh, you know, homosexuality is wrong, and there's a huge homosexual community that lives in and around Royal Oak and so if you're homosexual and you're walking on the street they were getting upset and so we walked up on this commotion of people standing out you know alongside this guy around this guy yelling at him and saying you don't know what you're talking about and then of course you had you know the Christians who truly know the gospel stepping up and you know arguing with this guy trying and really it was kind of more of an attempt to show I'm not with him I'm not like that guy if you guys really want to know Jesus talk to me which is just kind of in a sense a source of pride so as I'm sitting there listening to him I'm going okay there's nothing that he's saying here that's not necessarily uh, wrong but how he's saying it is definitely wrong uh, you could see kind of an anger and everything that he was talking about was legalism the list of don'ts you know not not anything about God loving you not anything about you know God having wrath against us but his wrath being able to be turned away from us if you know we seek after Christ it's all the bad news all bad news and all politically <laughs> politically explosive stuff given that we've made things into political issues also so he's railing about women he's railing about homosexuality he's railing about sin but never giving any good news in the process uh, and, and you know I don't know whether he was called to do that or not, I don't want to question his call, but I do want to question his methodology. It was really bad. And, and the reason I wanted to talk about it is because now I'm dealing with more inconsistency. I'm dealing with the inconsistency on the part of this guy screaming on the corner uh, and it being all bad news because that's not consistent with the gospel. The gospel is not all bad news. As a matter of fact, the gospel is good news. And so I'm dealing with this inconsistency on the part of this guy, you know, you know screaming at people. And then my, this young lady, I want to say my friend, so we're not really friends yet, but this young lady meeting this guy, attributing some form of authority to him, enough authority to him to start yelling at him. And so it, it turns into this huge fight, and really all I could do was kind of walk away and observe, because I didn't want to get involved, because it's one of my pet peeves to have studied ministry and then to come alongside and and uh, meet up and argue with someone who, who hasn't because we're, we're generally arguing two different things and everybody walks away with, with a headache. But here I am having to deal with this woman who has her own inconsistencies, meeting up with a guy who has his own inconsistencies and it's a perfect storm. And so it was just a, a very strange thing to be watching. And in the end, um, you know, I kind of got, you know, upset and it ended up being, you know, kind of the, the killer for the night. Like, I just wanted to go home at that point. We went out for a little while after that, but I really just kind of the spirit in me of wanting to have fun was was gone because it was frustrating to, to watch this unfold uh, and to, to know that she had given enough authority to that guy to be able to later on, if I ask her a question about, you know, her own personal faith and walking away and her own responsibility, she's going to be able to point back to that guy over there, which is what most of us tend to do you know when when something comes at us uh, we want to you know point you know over there well what about them what about that guy over there who got it wrong what about that pastor who was molesting children what about that guy who was preaching on the street corner so uh, I feel like there's this inconsistency going on within people's lives when it comes to how we ridicule the church how we ridicule ourselves uh, and how we ridicule complete strangers uh, because she's ridiculing that stranger for preaching the way that he's preaching and he's ridiculing her uh, without knowing her at all without knowing her specific sins without saying hey let's sit down to coffee let's uh, let's relate to one another and then let me speak truth into your life so um, I think that's uh, what we need more of in this world is uh, taking the time to, to sit down and have that cup of coffee and say, hey, you know, let's let's talk. Let's try to be consistent in our faith by 
breaking bread together, by sharing life together, by having dialogue with one another. I'm big on dialogue, as you guys uh, know from the past. But anyway, that's my two cents. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I was all over the place today, but really, uh, what do you think about the inconsistency of people uh, in their faith and life uh, and culture? Uh, drop me a line, calvin.e.more at gmail.com, or uh, leave a comment on the blog below. Talk to you later. Bye.